The state of the Nigerian nation is one that has left many in despair and uncertainty. And while some are bothered about economic situations, others are weighed down by the spate of killings across the country. The insecurity reached its all-time high recently and it caught the attention of the Nigerian Senate, where some members called for the sack of the security chiefs and by extension insinuated that President Muhammad Buhari should resign to save face. And to discuss this and more biting issues in Nigeria is a political analyst, Frances Elisa Ogonaya. Thanks for joining us right here on the program. The <laughs> Kumbo is good to be here. Good. Now, let me gauge your thoughts, you know, on, on that story. You know, what's your take? On the story for, what story you read about, two or three stories? Yes, the last one where we talked about, you know, where uh, some people are calling for the president to, you know, to... to Resignation? Yes. Okay, the truth is the, the security of this nation, uh, first let's start with the state of the security. Um, we can only pretend, like I used to say, we can only try to pretend ignorance, but there are some things you do not wish away. And one of the things is um, the fact that um, the security of the nation actually needs to improve, that there's need for a state of the mind. They have failed. We did not elect the Joint Chiefs, we did not elect the National Security at the Nigerian media. Take it up from there. Right. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about uh, this ban on commercial motorcycles as well. Um, I want to gauge your thoughts on that, you know, generally, before we talk more on uh, security. security. Yes. So, um, your take on this whole uh, commercial riders being, being banned, you know, what's your take? We were talking security before the ban. It's a, you can see they're they are, they are correlated. They're mm -hmm. they yeah. related. Uh, the fact that uh, it's, uh, the figures available to us say that legal, in Lagos we are about 14.3 million. Yes, if that's if something to go by. Last year we were about 13.9. 13 3% go growth. It simply means Lagos is growing. A lot of people are trooping into Lagos. Why? In the lax from 2016 to 2020, Lagos, the population of Lagos kept on uh, growing at 3%. Why? This insecurity, the crisis in the north. Mm -hmm. People were leaving the north to Lagos. That's the only way. People left Kano. Well, Kano used to be like the commercial hub of the northern part of the country. They left Kano. They left just everybody in Lagos. You can see, and when they come to Lagos, the next, the easiest business to pick up is this commercial cycling. But why a lot of us got uh, more be with that is the fact that tricycles were also involved. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because the reasons they gave, the reasons the government gave, uh, it does not affect the tricycle so much. So I understand. I do not understand why the tricycle has to, because if they say it has to do with um, uh, the debt, they mm -hmm. say they have to do with crime. Yeah, I've, I've been a victim of one chance yellow buses, mm -hmm. and the yellow buses have not been banned. You know, I think many many Lagosians have been attacked by the yellow buses than motorcycles. And according to statistics, they have more accidents, you know, than the, uh, uh, the, 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 commercial, the commercial riders. riders. So, yes. so the reasons for me are not, are not well. I we had actually looked at the, the laws they are working with, which is the 2018 um, uh, reform, the uh, traffic uh, laws. It said that they mentioned some type of uh, motorcycle which they were to work with. So I expected the government and they mentioned some conditions which include the helmet, 200cc engine and all whatnot. Mm -hmm. I expected the government to have actually enforced the laws, not to, to ban, especially especially in those, those 15 local government dimension are the most important local governments in Lagos. Mm -hmm. You understand? And okay, no alternative in place as far as I'm concerned. They're asking, they're saying um, they are going to, they are going to, at what time? No, we do not have enough infrastructure, no roads. Everybody owns it. Every family, every compound in Lagos owns a car. Where would they go? Where would they apply? Okay. Now, is it not sheer wickedness that when government makes policies such as this that have tremendous implications on citizens, they do not provide prior, uh, you know, an alternative? Do you see the state government giving a soft landing in the case of jettisoning the perceived draconian policy eventually? Uh, what I think, um, we, we have, this is not the first time we are seeing a ban on the motorcycle. It has mm -hmm. become an administrative style of this legal state government. They do these things, but uh, uh, then one year or two years towards the next election, they lift it. But fashion that they did, Ambody also tried something like that. So uh, for me, I think they are playing politics with, the, with these commercial riders. For them, why do they end up lifting it towards the election time? Because they understand, uh, they understand how important the value mm -hmm. they provide to the society. Since you know these people come with some values, 
F nothing nothing is 100% uh, profitable every profit comes with some loss okay. every value comes with some menace you understand this they, they they provide values so okay. what what the government needed to do was to strike a very beautiful balance, balance which they weren't able to do or I, I, just, <laughs> I just hope they would do but do what I think they will end up doing is <laughs> they will end up settling up with the online uh, bike hailers mm -hmm. you understand then the common man in the street will suffer for it and at okay. the end of the day we'll have more crime now the insecurity in the country reached a crescendo uh, recently and uh, prompted a call by some senators uh, to basically demand for the sack of the service which, which we were talking about okay. earlier yes. you know is that the way to go okay uh, the call for sack uh, for the resignation of a president is a common practice in democratic any democratic setting it's not the first time nigeria is not the first country to do so uh, senator baribe is not the first person to actually ask that mm -hmm. the president should come down if you do not know what you're doing you see a lot of us share the same sentiment with senator baribe the reason is this. We do not understand why the, the service chiefs who have appeared to have really not so, not really, they do not really have a clue of what to do to the security situation. Uh, they do not seem to be as efficient as expected. What the government, what the, uh, the presidency needs to do uh, is to juggle up the system to see how we can actually let some people go, introduce some new, uh, new blood into the system. But the government has not done anything. And these are people, these are chief of staff whose terms have expired. You understand? We are asking, is there more that meets the eye? Why is the government a... Uh, why are they feed dragging? Why is it taking that long? And people are dying every day. Uh, rather, they, they, they change even strategies. They, they, they resorted to kidnapping. They resorted to their route you can no longer take. It wasn't like this about four or five years ago. Okay. Now, there are quite a number of stories that, you know, I want to sort of uh, gauge your thoughts on. So, you know, so let's move on to uh, uh, the others that I have in mind. There's the uh, coronavirus spread. Okay. And um, Nigeria has been listed among high-risk countries. How does that make you feel? Okay. We... we, we, we Looking at how Nigeria works uh, during the during the Ebola saga, the mm -hmm. Ebola, Ebola issue, a lot of Nigerians uh, are expecting that we we'll, that we will always survive. But worrisome is the fact that this is, this is a different administration entirely. We have in, uh, an entirely different Minister of Health who has actually we've not we rarely hear from this Minister of Health. We do not even know because before now we've been battling Lassa fever. Lassa fever has been there. The education is poor. The sensitization is poor. Even as uh, we're talking about Corona virus now um, uh, in Nigeria for, we've not recorded any case in Nigeria so far mm -hmm, which is good our, news which is good news to the best of our knowledge but the fact that Nigerians are the most traveled black nation we can take that so we're at risk we are at risk because Nigerians are virtually everywhere. There are countries you go to, in the hinterlands of, of many Caribbean cities, you find Nigerians there. Mm -hmm. So Nigerians go to everywhere. Now, uh, considering our relationship with the Asian country, where this coronavirus actually stemmed from, mm -hmm. it's worrisome. It's very, very, very worrisome because you can rarely find a company in Nigeria that doesn't have a Chinese staff. It's almost impossible, mm -hmm. you know. And then we have a good relationship with the Chinese government, and you have a lot of them flying in here. Of course, a lot of them have traveled for their lunar, for their new months. They are coming back. How ready are we? The Ministry of Health had not appeared ready. The Center for Disease Control has also not appeared ready. So I do not know. I do not know um, how ready this government is. And for me, I see the situation is poor. We can't all keep waiting for the government. Um, we can all keep waiting for the government. I think uh, media houses, uh, individuals, uh, non-governmental organizations, different bodies should actually begin to um, uh, play some roles while we wait for the government to do something. Now, let me go back to security once again. You know, I think we're just going to be going back and forth because all of the, the yeah. topics seem to be, you know, uh, weighing in on each other. You know, now, barely 24 hours after the senators mm -hmm. uh, met, President Buhari met, you know, with security chiefs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think he waited, you know, long to be called, be, you know, to question before meeting? Nobody actually questioned uh, the president anyway. <laughs> but people only be began to ask. Uh, people began to actually um, express worries. And um, it's important, probably because he had it from the Senate, um, he, he, because it may probably because it was discussed on the on the floor of the Senate. We saw a senator from Adamawa who who or who, who stated a case of his stepmother being kidnapped alongside his brother, uh, his brothers, and then um, how the villagers had to resort to self self help. I know uh, you, you needed no one to tell you if a senator a senator's home wasn't also safe. And uh, we are here. Former president was also attacked. Good luck, Jonathan. You know his home. This is the first time in history we're hearing a former president. He just 
just a predecessor, not as if it's a government of maybe probably during the pre-colonial days or something like that. Mm -hmm. We were asking, a, 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 former, a former president's home was also invaded, with senators' homes get invaded, travelers get uh, kidnapped, you know, people get beheaded, nobody's saying anything. It's unfortunate if it takes the call of uh, Senator uh, Hakota Baribe for him to actually begin to uh, convey a, a security meeting. But like you said, it's still about 48 hours later, we've not seen the outcome of that meeting. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's move now to uh, uh, another story. Trump bans Nigerians from being issued U.S. Um, immigrant uh, visa. You know, do you think this will affect the U.S.-Nigeria uh, uh, relationship? Of course it will. Of course it will. Uh, it, it's, it's a source of worry, not just to, like I said, we are the most traveled black nations. Nigerians love traveling. If not for anything, we just want to travel. Regardless of the economic issues here, we like traveling, basically. And of course, we're also very educated people. Uh, um, uh, the issue is this. Um, I think the federal government government has not uh, a, had a very beautiful relationship, the current government has not had a very beautiful relationship with the American government. And I think it's telling off on the citizens. I think the government needs to, uh, at this point, we're expecting the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which I think um, uh, uh, Jeffrey and Hema is actually doing very well um, to the <laughs> to, to relative, uh, I think he needs to. Sorry, to a relative extent. extent. Because he's been too British. He's too British for our international relations. So uh, that's why I think. I think we need somebody, uh, he needs to be supported somebody who is very proactive, who understands international policies and the politics involved. Mm -hmm. I think he understands international relations, but not international politics. That's Oops. my assessment of him. <laughs> you know, he understands the relations, but he doesn't understand the politics. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to be assisted. I don't want to be talk. Uh, we need to replace him anyway. Mm -hmm. But we need to. He needs to be assisted with someone who understands the international politics of international relationships. It is a really serious issues, mm -hmm. and we need to settle. Um, America okay. is the police right. of the world. All right. And on that note, that's where we're going to have to leave you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.